Welcome to the channel. Today, at the request of many in the community, I'm going to cover how to install Home Assistant locally on an NS Panel Pro. Now, this is going to be a long video, so please use the timestamps to jump to the relevant sections if required. So to do this, we'll be using some command line prompts and using some more advanced terminology. But this is a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you follow along and use the versions listed, then you will get this working. However, if you want instant gratification in getting Home Assistant running on your NS Panel Pro, then jump to the video in the pop-up above, and you'll have Home Assistant running in a browser in five minutes. So let's jump on in and see how we do this. Firstly, this video is based on the great work of Blackadder. Links in the pop-up to his full written tutorial. Now this is titled for the NS Panel Pro, but also works on several other panels. I'll put a full list in the description, just in case you want to try these out. If you'd like to pick up an NS Panel Pro, along with lots of other great Sonoff devices, then use the links in the description with the discount code. Now, since the NS Panel Pro is running Android, we're going to need a tool that will allow us to access the NS Panel Pro remotely. For this, we'll be using the Android Debug Bridge, or ADB as it's known. Use the link in the description to download the Windows version. I'll also include a link to a site where you can download the Mac or Linux versions. Using the link in the description or download directly from the page. Press Save As and save directly to your downloads directory. Press the folder icon to the right of the download. Now right click and press Extract All. Confirm with Extract. You can now delete the original zip file. For ease of access, I'll rename the folder to ADB. Now start a command prompt by typing into the search CMD and press enter. We now need to navigate into the folder. Type CD downloads, CD ADB, CD space, platform tools. Now we'll make the assumption that you have already set up your NS Panel Pro and connected it to your network. If not, you'll need to go and do that now and come back to this video. You will also need the IP address of your NS Panel Pro. You can obtain this from your router or from your NS Panel Pro. Move to your NS Panel Pro. Swipe down from the top, go into settings, scroll up until you see the about screen, scroll up and you will see your IP address. Moving back to the Windows PC command prompt, type ADB space connect space at the IP address of your NS Panel Pro and press enter. ADB will now connect to your NS Panel Pro. Now, if this fails, you can use a USB to connect to your NS Panel Pro, but this involved dismantling the device and is outside of the scope of this video. However, I'll put links in the description to how you can do this. Next, we need to confirm what devices are attached to the ADB. Type ADB space devices space minus L and press enter. This should list off your NS Panel Pro and should be recognized by the IP address. Now, let's set the NS Panel Pro to listen for TCP IP commands. Type ADB TCP IP 5555 and press enter. Now we need to go and install a launcher onto the NS Panel Pro. For ease of access to the NS Panel Pro, we'll need to install a launcher. And since there are memory limitations, we'll be keeping this as small as possible and using the ultra small launcher. Click on the link in the description for the ultra small launcher. Press save as, select ADB. Go into the platform tools and press save. Back in the command prompt window, we need to copy the command for the adb install ultra small launcher dot apk. Make sure this matches up with the file name that you just downloaded and press enter. You should see a message performing streamed installed and success. Now we can use the shell to simulate a home press. If you type adb shell input key event three that will be available in the description and press enter, this should bring up the eWe Link control panel. You now have a choice of the eWe Link control panel that you would normally get with the stock NS Panel Pro or the launcher. The choice is yours, but since you are watching this tutorial and are looking to install the Home Assistant Companion app on your panel, you might like to select Always. Next, we'll be installing Exposed, which we can use to install apps at the system level. Navigate to the download page for Exposed in the link in the description. Scroll down until you see the download APK and select. Press the Save As button and save into our platform tools and press Save. Navigate back to the command prompt window. 
copy the ADB instruction from the description below and paste and press enter. You should see the greeting with the message performing stream installed and installed and we have successfully installed exposed. Now we need to install the exposed framework. Press the link in the description for the exposed framework. Press the save as button and save to our platform tools. Copy the command from the description below for the exposed framework into the command prompt window. Verify the file name copied matches the file name in the command prompt and adjust the file name if required and press enter. ADB will copy the tar file to the SD card downloads directory of your NS Panel Pro. We now have a list of commands that we simply need to copy and paste into the command prompt window and execute. Copy ADB shell from the description and paste and execute. Make the file system writable. We need to navigate to the directory where we uploaded the exposed framework. We'll extract the exposed framework file. Now let's navigate into this directory. We'll make the installer script executable. And finally, we'll run the exposed framework installer script. You'll receive a done message along with a warning that the first boot will take longer than usual and to please wait for a few minutes. The exposed framework is now installed, but currently not running. This is the time we'll need to restart our NS Panel Pro to activate the exposed framework, as the exposed framework will start on reboot. This will take a little longer than usual. Power off your NS Panel Pro, wait for 10 seconds, and then turn it back on. On the NS Panel Pro screen, you'll see an icon for exposed install. Select this. You'll see a warning message to be careful. Press do not show this again and press OK. Make sure you see the green tick, which means exposed is installed. If you don't see this, then try rebooting and trying again. Next, we need to download and install the AnyWeb View. Press the link in the description for AnyWeb View. Select the asset, press the Save As button and save to our Platform Tools directory. Since we have rebooted our NS Panel Pro, we need to confirm to make sure that it is still connected to ADB. Using the ADB devices space minus L, we can verify if we are still connected. If it returns the IP address, then it is still connected. To install the AnyWeb view, navigate to your command prompt and copy the relevant command from the description below. Verify that the name of the file is the same and press enter. This will bring back a success message. Moving back to our NS Panel Pro, press the hamburger in the top right hand corner. Select Modules. You will now see Any Web View. Select this. You now need to restart your NS Panel Pro again by power cycling it. Remember that every time you reboot your NS Panel Pro, you need to confirm that ADB is still connected. Now we need to sideload another APK. This will allow us to run other apps such as Kiosk Browser, Wall Panel, and Home Assistant Companion app. Select the Android System Web View from the description below. Scroll down and select the Download APK. Save as and place into your Platform Tools directory. The file name that is downloaded is very long. It's much easier to rename this. Click on the file, change to Android underscore System underscore Web View dot APK and press enter. Back on the command prompt window, type in the following command and make sure that the names match and press enter. This might take a little longer than usual as it's a larger APK, but hang in there. Once completed, you'll see performing stream installed and success. It's now time to restart your NS Panel Pro again by power cycling it. Now we need to enable developer options. Head back to your NS Panel Pro Press Settings, scroll down to System and select. Select About Tablet. Scroll down until you see Build Number. Press this seven times. A message will pop up telling that you are now in Developer Options. This means that the developer tools are now available to you. Use the back arrow in the top left hand corner. You should now be able to see Developer Options. Select this. Scroll down until you see Web View Implementation and select. You should now see two options. The first option is the built-in Android system web view. The second option is the Android system web view that we just installed. Select this. We are now free to sideload more apps and these will work straight out of the box. 
Now let's download the Home Assistant Companion app and install. Select the Home Assistant Companion app link in the description below. Scroll down to the Download APK and press. Press the Save As and download to our platform tools and press Save. As the file name that came down has spaces in it, click on the file, replace the space with an underscore and press Enter. Now copy the ADB install Home Assistant line that's inside of the description, verify the names are the same and press Enter. Again, you will see Performing Stream Installed and Success. Home Assistant Companion app has now been successfully installed onto your NS Panel Pro. Moving back to our NS Panel Pro, we should now see that the Home Assistant app has been installed. Selecting the Home Assistant will bring up the usual Home Assistant Companion app configuration. You can now configure your Home Assistant as you would a normal Android device. Now, as this is an NS Panel Pro, it will probably be constantly logged in and on display it's advisable to give it its own account so that you can control access and the default screens that are displayed. We'll be covering in a future video how to tune the panel to show friendly dashboards for such small screens. So if you want an always on display with a fixed brightness, you're done, congratulations. However, if you want to optimize your installation for screen brightness and turn on when you approach the screen, we'll need to continue. We'll need a final APK that we'll need to side load to the NS panel that's called Auto Magic. Press the link in the description for Auto Magic. Select the newest version of Android 10. Press Save As, and as before, download to our Platform Tools directory, and press Save. Heading back to the Command Prompt window, copy the command from the description and paste into the Command Prompt window. Make sure the file name matches the file name that you just downloaded, and press Enter. Once completed, you will see the success message. Now you're probably still in Home Assistant on your NS Panel Pro. We need to force the panel to open the Home screen. To do this, we're going to use the Shell Input Key Event 3. Type that into the Command Prompt window and press Enter. Your NS Panel Pro should display the launcher and you'll see the Auto Magic icon. Select the Auto Magic icon. Accept the Terms of Service. This will be followed by a tutorial. Keep pressing the next until you get to the grant access screen. You must grant access to AutoMagic to use the storage to be able to use the app. Since we're going to be using our own configuration, you need to delete all the example flows. Press the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of each tile and select delete. You need to repeat this action for all the example flows. If you see a red bar at the bottom of the screen, this will disappear on its own. Inside of your platform tools directory, right click Press New, create a text file, and press Enter. Navigate to the link for Auto Magic Configuration in the description. Copy the code. Move back to your File Explorer. Open the text file. Paste in the code that you just copied. Go to File, Save As. Change the name of the file to automagic underscore configuration.xml and press Save. You can now close down Notepad. Now, if you have named the file to automagic underscore configuration.xml, you can copy the command that is in the description. Paste this into your command prompt window and press enter. The file will be pushed to the NS Panel Pro. Back on the NS Panel Pro, since you are already in automagic application, press the hamburger in the top left hand corner. Select Import Flow Widget. Press the hamburger in the top left hand corner. Select Downloads. You should now see your automagic configuration file. Select this. The flow will now be displayed. The flow comprises of two parts. The first box uses the built-in proximity sensor to trigger anything moving close to the NS Panel Pro. Second box will set the screen brightness as bright or dim and for how long it stays at that brightness. Tapping either box will bring up a pencil icon to the left. Tapping the pencil allows us to change the values. I'd recommend setting the proximity at around about 300. Navigating to the other box, for the duration, we have 15 seconds. I would recommend setting this to 30 seconds and pressing save. You can now activate the flow using the toggle switch in the top right hand corner. As the flow is now active, if you move your hand close to your panel, you'll see that the proximity sensor will activate. Now there is one final change we need to make, and that is in relation to the display. Since the NS Panel Pro is currently showing the Auto Magic application, we need to move back to the launcher. 
To do this, we'll use the ADB shell input key event three. Copy from the description, paste into your prompt command, and press enter. Back on the NS Panel Pro, we need to navigate to Settings, Display, Advanced, Scroll up, select Sleep. This is the amount of time the device will remain awake with the screen on and ranges from never to 10 minutes. This is another variable you might like to try different values, but in my testing, 30 seconds is a good starting point. Now, although I'm sure that everything will work perfectly, if the proximity sensor fails to wake the device, you will need to remove power to the device to wake it up. So that's Home Assistant running locally on an NS Panel Pro. I hope you stuck around to the end. If that totally blew your mind and you didn't manage to get everything running and just want the easy way out, then check out the video on how to display the Home Assistant through the built-in browser that will get you up and running in minutes. Thanks to Blackadder for putting in the effort with this tutorial and thank you for your support. We could not make these videos without you. If you like the video, then consider subscribing to the channel and becoming part of the community. And if you've managed to get everything working, why not a super thanks or buy me a coffee? I definitely need one after this. Until the next one, keep those panels nice and bright.